Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another PyQt5 tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this video, we're going to learn how to add a search field to filter your table. All right, so here's the uh, exercise we'll be doing. So here I have a PyQt application. On the top is my search field, and below is a QTable view widget. Here in this search field, I can type uh, any character to search any company. So we have nine companies. So if I type letter A, and any company names that contains letter A is going to show up. And we can make the filter case sensitive or case insensitive. So it's really up to you, which I'll show you in this tutorial as well. If I search Apple, and Apple is going to filter in my results set. If I search for Google, and Google is going to show up in this result set, and so on. Here, let me close this window. Here in my Python script, I'm going to import a system module from the pyqt5.qtwidgets module. I will import qapplication, qwidget, qline editor, qtable view, qheader view, and qvbox layout. From the pyqt5.qt core module, I'll input a Qt class and Q sort filter proxy model class. So this class is will be using to perform to implement the, the filtering uh, function. And below I'm going to create my application instance. I'm going to construct my app demo instance as demo. Now let me launch my window just to make sure that there's no typo, All right? So let me close this. Next, I'm going to create my QVBox layout object. I'm going to name this object main layout. This goes to QVBox layout. In the end, I'm going to set the layout with main layout object. Now I need some uh, dummy data. So I'm going to create a list. I'm going to name this list companies. And I'm going to just copy a list of companies. So here, let me just copy over my companies. Next, I need to create my model. I'm going to use QStandard item model class to uh, create my base model. And we're going to pass two parameters, the row count and column count. To get the row count, so I'm going to insert the lin function. And I'm going to insert the company's object. And for this exercise, I'm trying to keep uh, everything simple. So I'm going to just use one column. So I'll insert one to indicating that my data set only has one column. And here I can uh, specify my header label. So I'm going to use set horizontal header label method. I'm going to insert a list followed by the uh, header name. Now I need to rearrange my company's array, which is uh, this line right here. And I need to add each company to my model. So here I'm going to insert my enumerate function. And I'll insert the company's option. And I'm going to say that for row and company, and enumerate followed by the company's object. I want to construct my Q standard item object, and this should be item. And we'll pass the company name. Then we want to uh, add the item to my model. I'll pass the row index, the column index, and the item object. Now let me create my widgets so I know my window is a little bit empty. So this is what the window looks like right now. There's nothing in it. All right, so let me create my widgets. On the top, I want to create a search field. So I'm going to name this object search field is equals to Q line edit. I'm going to use the set style sheet method 
to set the font size and I'll set my font size to 35 pixel for the height. I want to increase the height to 60 pixel. And I want to add a search field to my main layout object. And I notice I have a typo. Here, let me fix that. I want to use the add widget method to add the search field. Below the search field, I want to insert my table. So I'm going to name my QTable view object as, uh, as table. And again, I'm going to use set style stream method to uh, set the font size to 35 pixel. And I'll add the table to my main layout object. And this is what we have so far. So just a very simple uh, interface. And let me uh, set the, let me resize the window. I will resize the window to 1600 by 1000. I think that's a little bit too wide, so let me fix that. So I'll change that to 1200. And 1200 looks pretty good. So let me type something in my search field. Apple, Google. Okay, the font size looks pretty good to me. Now let's go back to line 19. So just right after uh, the loop. Here I'm going to construct my QSort filter proxy model object. And I'll name this object filter proxy model. It's equals to QSort, QSort filter proxy model. And the proxy model is going to be our main model to display the data set. So from the filter proxy model object, we need to set the source model. In case if you want to set the filter as case insensitive, you can use this method called set filter case sensitivity. And from the QT class, we can pass the case insensitivity value. And just to point out that the default is set to case sensitive. So if I come in out this line, and when you perform a search, the search is going to be case sensitive. And you need to set the, the key column. So I'll use the set filter key column method. I'm going to indicate that I want to use the first column to perform the, the searching function. Now let's go back to the table widget. And once I have my model created, so I can use the set model method with the filter proxy model object. Now let's take a look at what we have so far. All right, so here's our data set. And noticing that the text is a little bit uh, cramped, so we can fix that right now. Here, let me go back to the table object. From the table object, the vertical header, the set session resize mode. I want to set the mode to stretch. So from the Q header view class, I want to insert a stretch value. I'm going to duplicate this line. I'm going to change vertical header to horizontal header. Now if I launch my application, and the row height and the column width is going to stretch out uh, more evenly. All right, so the last thing we need to implement is the filter function. Right now, when I type something in my search field, uh, nothing's going to happen. So here, let me go back. If we go to the search field, I want to implement the text change signal with the uh, filter proxy model object that sets filter rig exp. And this is basically telling the, the text change event that I want to use the proxy model's uh, filter to filter my, uh, my data set. And this is everything we need to write. Let me just double check. All right, so if I launch my application, 
Right now, we're setting the filter as case sensitive. If I type letter A uppercase, only company names with uh, uppercase letter A is going to show up on my result set. If I type lowercase a, and only company name with lowercase a will show up on my result set. And if I want to set the filter of setting to case insensitive, I can uncomment line 22 and just set the setting to case insensitive. And if I go back, and this time if I type uppercase a, any company's name with letter A is going to show up, regardless if it's going to be uppercase A or lowercase A. So this is I want to share in this video, and hopefully you guys found the video useful. And as always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.